Chapter 8 By 7.15 we'd all arrived at Alexis's house. Because we had plans to drink, no one brought their own vehicle. Devin had arranged for Mickey to pick me up at home, and we picked up Rissa on our way. I didn't know it until we got there, but he'd also arranged for Mike Harwitz, another enforcer, to pick up Bailey. Mike and Mickey were to be our guards for the night. They stationed themselves at either entrance of the house, one in the front room, the other on the back porch. As far as I knew, Devin wasn't expecting trouble, but we still had no idea where West and Troy were, much less Willie Anderson or Wesley Garza, the remainder of the trio who had killed Annie. Keeping guards in place made Devin feel better, so I didn't fight it, besides, it meant I wouldn't have to worry about getting home. By the time Rissa and I got there, Bailey was sitting on the bar stool where Alexis had been yesterday afternoon, and our hostess was in the kitchen, manning the blender. There you are, she said. Pull up a chair, I've got the first batch in the works. Rissa and I went around the counter to join Bailey, while Alexis put the lid on the blender and turned it on. After a few seconds she stopped it and poured the contents into four glasses, dropped straws in and handed them out. Margaritas? I asked, the tart scent of tequila and lime giving it away. Yep, my favorite recipe. I took a sip and could see why. The opaque white color was odd, but the flavor was outstanding. So what brought on a girl's night? I asked, setting my glass on the counter. I thought we could get to know each other a little better. I don't know about you, but I needed some girl time. She grinned and winked at me. I definitely needed it, Bailey said, after a long pull on her own drink. I don't know very many people here yet, just the people I work with. I see them all day, I don't want to socialize with them. Besides, they wouldn't understand half my life. I gave her an understanding look. Most of my old friends from before I'd started shifting didn't understand a lot of what had happened to me over the last few months, at least the stuff they knew about. The stuff they didn't know about would have really made their heads spin. What do we want to do first? I looked around the small group. Drink your margarita, I'll start the next batch. Alexis went back to the blender, scooping a chunk of frozen limeade from a can on the counter and adding it to the pitcher before dumping in tequila and milk. How do we plan on getting home tonight? Rissa asked. I shrugged one shoulder. Don't worry about that, Mike and Mickey will make sure we get home safe, after all, they got us here, didn't they? I watched as Alexis added ice, covered the blender, and turned it on. I took another long drink from my own glass. If I hadn't tasted it myself, I wouldn't have guessed that milk wouldn't make a good margarita, but it was good. Excellent, actually. Where'd you learn to make these? My sister-in-law. She made them while she was her a few months ago, taught me how. Lauren? I'd met Hank's sister while she was here, she's a non-shifter. I'd offered to shift her but she's married to a normal human and though her children are still little, they show no signs of being shifters, at least not yet. She opted not to try it, though she said she may reconsider if either or both of her kids shifts when they're older. It's really good. Alexis nodded and picked up her glass, taking a long, deep drink. It is. Bailey sipped at her drink, barely a quarter of the drink gone from her glass. Rissa sat, quiet, drinking her margarita almost as quickly as Alexis was. I wasn't draining mine quite so fast, but I had about half of it gone and would be ready for a refill soon. I figured there's been a lot going on recently, and a chance to relax and let loose a little would be nice. Alexis filled her glass then brought the pitcher around, topping off everyone else's as well. Besides, I wanted an excuse to have a few drinks, to laugh and giggle a while then jump my husband. Her light and tinkling laughter filled the room. Bailey and Rissa joined in, and I smiled as well. Maybe a couple drinks was what I needed to help me get back to normal. Sounds like a good idea to me. I tipped up my glass and drank probably half of it in a single pull. I turned to Rissa, you sleeping with Rain yet or still holding out on him? She coughed, almost choking on her drink. 
Bailey thumped her on the back several times, trying to help her clear her lungs of the drink she'd inhaled. You're seeing rain? Alexis asked, eyes wide. Rissa turned pink. We've been out a few times. Who's rain? Bailey asked, clearly perplexed. I gave Rissa a look that said I knew there was more to it and that she wasn't fooling me. I like Rain, Alexis said. He's a good guy and a good cop. I turned to Bailey. Rain's one of my brothers. He's with the STPD, he's human, but he knows about us. Your brother is human, she frowned. He is, I'm the only Kitsune in my family, I said, kinda enjoying her confusion. I'd always found it funny to watch people's reactions when they saw my brothers and sisters and I. We always explained eventually, but the confusion beforehand amused me. How? A big chunk of her family is adopted, including her. Rissa said. And Rain. I said. Rissa nodded. Yes, Rain too. How many of you are there? Bailey wanted to know. Six, but only four of us are adopted. And they all know about the Kitsune? No, I took another drink. Only my parents and Rain know, the rest have no clue. How could you hide it from them growing up? I didn't have to hide it, I didn't know myself, I told Bailey how I'd first come to shift and learn about shifters. And in that time you've made it too. You've had a busy year. I thought about all that had happened since that first shift. Running into Devon again, losing my best friend, being kidnapped, getting pregnant, mating, and losing my baby. I'd had a lot happen in a fairly short time. Busy is an understatement. I didn't want to talk about the troubles in my life, I wanted to let go and have some fun. I turned back to Rissa. You haven't answered my question. Her face flushed bright red again. No, I'm not sleeping with him, not yet. Why not? I pushed. We've only been out a couple times, I don't want to push it. What's your sense of him? Alexis asked. I like him, really like him. That's not what I mean. Alexis waved one hand. I mean sense feel. Are you drawn to him? Do you want to rub up against him when you're with him, and miss his scent when he's gone? When I'm with him, it's all I can do to keep my hands off him, the entire time. I'm always fighting the urge to hold on to him, to pull him closer, roll in his sweet leathery scent, or undo his hair and find out if it's as thick and soft as it looks. It is, I said. When we were kids we used to take turns practicing French braiding each other's hair. I like mine well enough but he has gorgeous hair. I smiled at the memory. He got more out of it than I did though. I can't braid my own hair but he can, and he's good at it. Bailey frowned, a police officer with long hair? I may have seen him around. You may have, he keeps it braided on duty but his hair is longer than mine. I said. Not real tall, Native American looking guy? I looked at her, remembering that I hadn't seen her standing, and I didn't know exactly how tall she was. He's a couple inches taller than I am. And yeah, he's Native American, as far as we know. As far as you know? Yeah, as far as we know. I let it drop. It might take a few minutes, but it would click that being adopted, we might not know much about our biological families. I looked back to Rissa. Would it help if you knew how he feels? I'd already had nearly two full drinks in only a few minutes. It wasn't that it was enough to make me even tipsy, but perhaps it had loosened my tongue. She looked at me a second, intrigue written all over her face. Maybe. Keep in mind, he's human, so he doesn't have the same sense as we do, and even if he did, he might interpret them differently. She nodded. But he said he can't get enough of you, he wants to touch you all the time. If you were to tell him how you feel, he may admit to feeling the same. He knows about us, he knows about mating instinct, and from where I stand it looks like you're both feeling that. He doesn't scare easily, if that's your worry. 
Rissa took a long drink and sat down her empty glass. That does help. You said earlier this week that he knew about us, but I hadn't put that together far enough to realize he'd know about mating too. I'll talk to him. I couldn't help but feel satisfied. I don't know that having found my mate made me more likely to try to fix other people up, but I knew my brother, and I knew how much he wanted a family of his own, when he found the right person to build that with. I suspected that right person was sitting next to me. Time for more? Alexis pushed herself up from her stool and took the blender pitcher back to where the motor sat and started mixing up another batch. I'm ready. I drained my glass and set it on the counter for more, then pointedly looked at Bailey, who still had nearly half a drink in front of her. What? She laughed. If I didn't know better, I'd say you were trying to get me drunk. It takes a lot of alcohol to get us truly drunk, but nicely relaxed will do. Alexis dumped ingredients into the mixer, covered it, and turned it on. She turned and gave us a grin. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like dancing. She brought the pitcher over and filled the glasses, even topping off Bailey's since it still wasn't empty. Come on. She put the empty pitcher on the counter and led the way into the living room. Hey Mickey, I said as we all trailed into the room where he sat, his attention seemed to be on his PCD. He looked up. Hello ladies, what can I do for you? Nothing. Alexis picked up a remote from the table next to one recliner and turned on the screen hanging on the opposite wall. We want to dance and in order to do that we need music. She located the station she wanted and turned it on, setting it so it streamed through the speakers in the kitchen and dining room where we'd been congregating instead of the living room. But I'll take mercy on you and not blast your eardrums out too. She winked at him then led us back into the living room. No need to worry, I can watch a bunch of women dance any day. He said as we left. I laughed, what I knew of him so far, Mickey was a sweetheart who took his job seriously. He might laugh and flirt with us, but he wouldn't let his guard down while he did it. I trusted him to have my back, mostly because Devin trusted him and I trusted Devin. Back in the dining area, I picked up my drink again and started moving to the music. Glad it was a slow song to start out with, I just let my body sway. Don't worry, there's better dance music coming up, I just started with something slow to get us started, to warm us up a little. Alexis took my hand and spun me in a circle. I laughed loud and free. I was getting into this girl's night thing. So, anything interesting happened recently? I asked her. Only thing unusual to happen around here was when Levi brought in Bailey. She motioned to our newest packmate. I turned to Bailey. How are you doing? Pretty good, all things considered. I've got some pretty bruises, but that's all that's left. What happened anyway? Normally, I probably wouldn't have asked, but I'd had just enough alcohol in a short amount of time that my inhibitions were obviously lowered. I was out running, I heard a car coming and thought I had plenty of time to get across the road and out of sight before they got to me, but I misjudged. They came around the corner and caught my hindquarters. I must have blacked out, because the next thing I remember was someone picking me up and putting me in their car. Levi said you were out on Bryce Road? Alexis asked. Yeah, I live in Pima and there's not a whole lot on that side of the river. I thought it would be a good place for a run. I shook my head. There's a lot more traffic on that road than you'd think. Next time you want to run, give me a call. If I can't go with you and show you a good place, at least I can tell you some safe places to go. I may only have learned to shift in the last year, but I've lived in the area all my life. I'm familiar with all the really remote spots, they were good for partying when I was a teenager. Bailey laughed. I'll do that, but it may be a while before I'm ready to run again after this. After next weekend you'll know one of the best spots anyway. Rissa said. You are going to the party, aren't you? The football one? Bailey's nose wrinkled as she asked. 
Yeah, it's a Super Bowl party, but there will be lots there who aren't watching and don't care about football. The Super Bowl is just a good excuse to have a big get-together, we'll laugh and drink, and it will be lots of fun. We'll be able to shift and run anytime we want while we're there. No normals invited? Bailey asked. No normals that don't already know about us. Spouses and such are welcome. I clarified. I don't know if Rain is working or not but feel free to bring him. I said to Rissa. Secretly, I hoped he had to work, not because I didn't want him there, but he might pick up from one of the enforcers why we were really throwing the big party, and I didn't want to put that burden on him. He was keeping enough secrets for the pack already. The music changed, the beat got faster and a little rougher. I had no problem keeping up with the faster tempo. It felt good to let loose and dance without caring who was watching and what they might think. We finished one bottle of tequila and were well into our second when Hank walked into the dining area to find Alexis, Bailey and me dancing while Rissa manned the blender. We'd been taking turns with who would fix the next round of drinks. I'd found I tended to make them the strongest. Oh, oh. Looks like the party's over. Rissa was the first to spot Hank. You girls have fun tonight? He came up behind Alexis and placed a soft kiss behind her ear. We need to do this more often. I kept dancing but Bailey stopped, making her way back to the counter. Hank gave me an indulgent smile. You look good. Why don't you finish this round and we'll see about getting you ladies home? We can do that. I lifted my nearly empty glass and drained it before putting it on the counter next to Rissa to refill. Are you sure, sir? We can go now. Rissa was hesitant to pour more drinks now that the Lysandros was home. He gave her a genuine smile. It's Hank when you're a guest in my home and yes, I'm sure. I need to debrief your guards before you can go anyway. Why do we have guards? Bailey asked. Because I had a friend who turned into a stalker and though he's done with that, he has some buddies who are still out there and my mate is a little overprotective of me. I shot a grin at Hank. As long as they're not too overbearing, I don't complain. All right then. She poured the drinks as Hank shook his head at me and headed out the back door to where Mike sat. I kept dancing and drinking. I wasn't worried about getting home, Mickey would make sure I made it safe. I just drained the last of my margarita when the doorbell rang. A glance at the clock told me it was almost 10, and I wondered who would be here this late. I didn't have long to wonder because a moment later, Mickey escorted Rain into the room. Rissa, I hear you could use a ride home, he asked. Before she had a chance to get over her shock, I threw my arms around his neck and gave him a big hug. Pulling away, I turned back to the rest of our little group. Bailey, this is my brother, Rain Daniels. Rain, this is Bailey. I turned back to her. I'm sorry, I just realized I don't remember your last name. It's Peters. Bailey Peters, she's new to the area, transferred in a few weeks ago. Transferred? I'm with the mine, I wanted out of Colorado. I was tired of snow and ice and I wanted something warmer, so here I am. Ah, uh, makes sense. Nice to meet you, Bailey. Nice to meet you too, she said. He turned back to Rissa. Can I give you a ride home? He held out one hand and bowed in her direction in a courtly gesture. Sure, let me just grab my bag. She went around the table to pull her purse and jacket off the back of one of the chairs. As she passed me I leaned in close and whispered, go for it. She met my look for an instant, then went back to my brother. I'm ready. He wrapped one arm around her waist and pulled her against his side before lowering his lips to meet hers. Em, margaritas taste good on you. She glanced around the room and turned pink. Come on baby, let's go. His arm still around her, he guided her back toward the front door. Hey Mickey, you gonna take me home soon? I called to my guard in the next room. No, actually, I thought I'd take care of that. Devin came up behind me. 
He's gonna take Bailey home. I laughed, turned in his arms and hugged him, sniffing his neck to get a whiff of the familiar smoky scent that was my mate. Hey baby, how are you tonight? His hands came up to rest on my hips. I'm good, but you look like you've had a bit to drink. He smiled down at me. A bit. I stretched up to kiss him. I think we drank about a bottle and a half of tequila. Closer to three and a half. I spun around at the sound of Hank's voice behind me, I was grateful for Devin's hands on my waist because the sudden movement made the room start spinning. I wobbled on my feet, blinking several times before I could form the words. You startled me. I didn't intend to. He wore an indulgent smile as he pulled Alexis against his side. Did you have a good time this evening? I did. I leaned back against Devon. We need to make this a regular event. I'll see what we can do, the Lysandro said. I think I'll take my mate home and put her to bed. Devon's voice vibrated through me. Sounds like a good plan to me. Take care of her. Hank said. I plan on it. Devon moved to one side of me and with an arm around my waist, he guided me to the front door and out to his pickup. After helping me climb into the truck and sliding in behind the wheel himself, Devon started the engine and pulled away from the curb. What did you do this evening? I asked. We had a meeting with the Anakitos. We? Me, Hank, and the enforcers on the Anakitos team. I frowned a moment, Mickey was on the Anakitos team, and since he'd been with me, he'd missed it. I didn't know you had one planned. Anything I need to be concerned with? Nothing that needs your attention tonight. I knew he wasn't keeping things from me. I could feel his honesty through our constant connection. Add in the fact that I was half drunk, and that was likely why he wasn't telling me about whatever the meeting had been about now. I had no doubt he'd tell me about it later. Okay, I can live with that. I leaned against him, let my head rest against his shoulder, and closed my eyes while I waited to get home. Wake up, sleepy head. It's time to go inside. Devon said, a little while later. I'm awake, I'm awake. I hadn't really been asleep, just dozing. I stirred and stretched a moment while I waited for him to get out, then slid across the seat toward him. He took my arm and helped me down, making sure I was steady on my feet before releasing me to walk on my own. Hang on, don't go inside without me, he cautioned, as he closed and locked the truck. I stopped on my way to the door and waited for him to join me. I didn't think about it being January until I started shivering. Come on, baby. It's cold out here, he wrapped his leather jacket around my shoulders. And you don't have on a coat again. I hunched my shoulders, enjoying the comforting smoky scent of my mate on the leather. He led us inside and took a deep breath, checking for foreign scents. Wait here. He went to check the rest of the house. I considered sitting or lying on one of the two sofas in the room, but I would only have to get back up again. You about ready for bed? he asked, coming back into the room. Just about what time is it? A little after ten. I remembered again seeing the clock at Alexis's house before we'd left. We went through three and a half bottles of tequila in about three hours? No wonder I'm feeling a little tipsy. Tipsy? Devon chuckled but didn't disagree. Yes, tipsy. I'm not stumbling or slurring my words so I'm not shit-faced. I made my way to the bedroom, sat on the edge of the bed, and tugged one leg of my jeans up over the top of my nearly knee-high boot. I started to untie them but my fingers felt fat and clumsy. They wouldn't do what I wanted them to. Here. Devon went to one knee and easily untied the knot. With deft movements he unlaced the top and loosened the lower laces enough to pull the footwear off. I lay back on the bed and let him take care of the other foot for me. Once he tugged off the second boot, I pushed myself upright and started unbuttoning my blouse. 
Are you sleepy or do you want to take a bath? he asked. A bath sounds nice, but it will probably put me to sleep. I'm not ready to sleep just yet. What do you want if not sleep? I'll let you figure that out for yourself. I gave him a coy wink. He watched as I shrugged my shirt off my shoulders, unbuttoned my jeans and shoved them down, I had to shimmy my hips to work them over the widest part of my ass. I stepped out of them and turned to head into the bathroom. Figured it out yet? I asked over one shoulder. When I came out of the bathroom, Devin was waiting for me, a full glass of water in one hand. That's not what I had in mind. I looked pointedly at the sweatshirt he still wore. We'll get there but drink this first. I gave him an unhappy look but took the glass and took several long gulps. Happy now? All of it, or you'll be sick tomorrow. We may process alcohol faster, but we still get dehydrated and hungover just like anyone else. Yes, sir. I drank the last of the water and set the glass on the nightstand with a loud thump. Any more commands, sir? Heat rushed through my body. This could be fun if it went right. The alcohol had removed any inhibitions I might have normally had, and that thought crossing my mind made my stance change from defiant to flirtatious. It was a subtle change, but one that Devin noticed. Surprise bled into my mind through my mental link to my mate. How much are you up for? he asked. I don't know, try me. Then let's start out kind of easy and work from there. Okay. Middle of the bed, sit on your heels, arms at your sides, knees wide. He waited until I started to comply. Oh, and I want you naked. Lose the underwear. I hesitated a second then unhooked my bra and let it fall to the floor before sliding my panties off my hips and leaving them next to my bra. I climbed onto the bed, moving to the middle before settling my feet a few inches apart and sitting upright. I was a little unsteady at first but soon found my balance. Knees farther apart, Devin directed. I want to be able to see you all pink and wet for me. My whole body flushed as I shifted my knees as requested. Very nice. He reached out and cupped one breast, lightly rolling the nipple before pulling away. I reached for him. Nara, hands down or I'll make you keep them behind your back. Devin looked at me for a long second. You sit there just like that, let me watch you while I undress. Being completely naked and at his command exhilarated me. My body heated and I felt liquid desire pool between my thighs. It wouldn't be long before it started leaking from me. I knew he would be able to see it, smell it, and enjoy it. The thought only served to make my need stronger. My whole body heated, and I wasn't sure if it was the eroticism of what we were doing, the alcohol, or both. He backed away, stopping a couple of steps from the bed, his eyes never leaving me. His sweatshirt was the first to go, I caught hints of skin as the t-shirt underneath lifted with his raised arms. My mouth watered. I ached to sink my teeth into those taut muscles, not hard, just enough to tease. Next came the rubber band from his hair. When we'd first re-met it had been longish, a military cut grown shaggy and almost to his jaw in front, now it was past his collar. He'd said something once about cutting it, but when I threatened to cut mine too, he'd back down. Now he often kept it pulled back, either in a ponytail or braid. He pulled the elastic from his hair and shook it loose from the tight braid, running the fingers of both hands through it making sure it was free. I knew from experience how good it felt to do that after having had it pulled tight all day. Then reaching one arm behind his head, he dragged the thin t-shirt over his head and tossed it in the laundry basket in the corner. He shook his head one more time, so his hair fell free before looking at me through a thin curtain of hair. I wanted to go to him and push it back out of his face and bury my fingers in it, but he told me to stay. He shoved one hand into his hair and back uncovering his face as if he'd read my mind. You enjoying the view? He lifted one eyebrow. I bit my lip and nodded. I haven't told you not to speak. He lifted one brow. Licking my lips I searched for the right words. I love the view but you know that, don't you? 
He shot me a sexy smile and towed off his tennis shoes one at a time, kicking them out of the way before dropping his hands to his jeans. Popping the button he stopped, looking at me. Do you want a safe word? I shook my head. Our connection will tell you if you go too far. All right then, cup your breasts for me. Tease your nipples hard and offer them to me. Without hesitation I slid my hands up my hips and over my stomach, cupping my breasts for a moment before using my thumb and forefingers to pinch and roll the sensitive buds until they were hard and puckered. The whole time my eyes never left his. I felt heat pool in my belly as I offered my full, aching breasts to him. Very nice. He lowered the zipper on his jeans and eased the thick cotton over his hips, leaving his underwear in place. I held still. Waiting. I ached to sink my teeth into those taut muscles, just hard enough to tease and torment. Slow, agonizingly slow were his movements as he released his muscled legs from the confines of the denim, leaving him in only his socks and underwear. I watched with hooded eyes as he removed his socks and then ran his thumbs between his abs and the elastic band of his briefs. I swallowed hard. Tell me what you're thinking, Nikki, he commanded as his eyes moved from mine to my breasts. Back and forth, his eyes moved as if he were telling me something. That's when I realized I had been pinching my nipples tightly, distracted by watching him. Releasing my hold, heat rushed to the throbbing nub sending another bolt of heat to the junction of my thighs. Ooh. I cried out as the throbbing and pain took over my thoughts for more than a moment. I wanted his hands on me bad, but I was enjoying the slow build he was leading me through too. You like that, do you? Devin asked with a cocky grin on his lips. I could only nod. I bit my bottom lip and made a sound of agreement deep in my throat. Anything else you'd like to say? Devin asked as he pulled the elastic band out from his hips and let it snap back in place. My eyes dropped to his waist, then further to his bulging briefs. Let me see, I begged, my voice barely more than a whisper. He hooked his thumbs in the waistband again and inched them down his hips. I fought to remain where I was. The urge to go to him, to rip the thin cotton away was nearly overwhelming. My eyes followed his movement as he revealed himself to me. He was agonizingly slow, but I knew he was doing it on purpose. He was trying to draw things out to make me hotter. Heat pulled between my thighs. It was working. When his briefs finally dropped to the floor I let my eyes skim up his body, pausing for a moment at the thick erection, then continuing up to meet his gaze. You planning to stand there all night? I lifted one brow, hoping he'd take it as the challenge I meant it to be. Maybe. A low growl trickled from my throat without warning. My eyes widened, the sound surprised even me. Devin grinned. Getting a little impatient? Apparently. He looked at me for another long moment then moved toward me, kneeling on the edge of the bed, he bent closer. Are you sure you're up for this? His words breathed across my face as his chest brushed my taut nipples. Heat rushed through me. Try me. I stretched upwards, raising to my knees until my lips brushed against his. My fingers curled with my effort to keep from grabbing him, pulling him against me and taking over, the reaction squeezed the swollen flesh of my breasts, and it only served to inflame my senses more. He wanted to control the evening and I wanted him to, but it was harder than I'd anticipated, to remain passive. I wanted to curl my fingers in his hair and feel his body close to mine, instead I waited. I didn't have to wait long. After a few seconds he lowered his mouth and kissed me hard. I met every thrust of his tongue with one of my own and gave back as much passion as he gave me, but only after he set the pace. Pouring myself into what he chose to give me I got lost in the kiss, barely noticing as his hands came to rest on my shoulders. It wasn't until he slid his hands down my arms, pulling my hands away from where they still gripped my breasts, that I realized the length of his body was pressed against mine. With a low moan I relaxed into him, letting my body sag against his. The fine hair covering his body scraped along my sensitive skin with even the slightest movement, and heat shot through my body. 
Without thinking about it, my fingers curled against the empty air, grasping for his skin in an unconscious effort to pull him closer. His mouth left mine and trailed along the side of my neck. I whimpered. Kneeling in the middle of our bed, my arms spread wide and wrists in his hands, I was entirely at his mercy. Sure, I could have moved if I had wanted to, but that would have put a stop to our game. That was the last thing I wanted to do, I might not have asked for this if I had been sober, but now that I had it, I was going to enjoy every moment. Letting my head fall back, I focused on every movement of his mouth as he trailed his tongue along my collarbone, drawing small swirls along my skin. I gasped in surprise when he pulled one hard nipple into the wet heat of his mouth. He teased and nibbled at the sensitive bud for a moment, before releasing it. He paid the other equal attention, before leaving them both to trail wet kisses down my stomach. I wanted to bury my hands in his hair, to pull him back and beg him to continue, but I fought the urge and stayed silent. As he moved lower, my legs began to tremble. Not from kneeling too long, instead from the effort of remaining still while Devin's actions made me weak in the knees. You all right? He looked up at me through his lashes. Not sure how much longer I can kneel like this. I said. Then sit or better yet, lay back. He helped me lay back against the pillows, but I want your legs open like this. He moved my feet so my knees were up, then pushed my knees apart so I was wide open to him. Just like that, he said with a playfully leering grin. Watching him, I waited, eager to find out what he had in mind. His gaze moved slowly down my body, his clear gray eyes hot, stopping when it reached the junction of my thighs. A slow grin spread across his face and he bent low, trailing soft kisses from my belly button down to my hip. He paused and I couldn't keep my hips from rolling, silently begging for more. The heat pooling at my core had become a burning ache, one I knew only he could extinguish. His eyes flicked up at me for just a moment before he lowered his head once more. Cool air swept across my flesh, sending a shiver up my spine. I was still shaking when his tongue swept through my slit. I shuddered. He licked and teased for a few moments, avoiding the sensitive bundle of nerves while he tormented and teased me. I was starting to give up hope that it would ever end, when he flicked lightly over the tender nub. I flinched in surprise and a low moan crept from my throat. More. I wanted more, but I couldn't make my mind do more than form the words. His mouth settled over my core, and there was incredible pressure as his tongue sank inside me. I shuddered, on the brink of orgasm. I ached. It wouldn't take much more, the slightest touch against my clit and I would explode. It didn't come. His mouth still pressed against my opening, Devon shifted. His hands lifted to cup and caress my breasts. His tongue plunged deep as he massaged the full mounds. My entire body trembled. Stars formed behind my eyes. My body took over and waves of pleasure took over my mind. I was nothing more than overwhelming sensation for several minutes. When I became aware again, Devin was kneeling over me, watching me with a knowing grin. Ready for more? I blinked up at him, unable to think enough to form words. Instead, I opened the link between us as far as I could and let him feel the empty ache where he still hadn't filled me. The connection also let me feel his desire. The burn of need deep inside him. I cried out, overwhelmed by the intense sensations. Unable to resist any longer, I wrapped my arms around my mate and pulled him against me. He pushed into me, sliding easily through the abundance of moisture flowing from me. As he filled me, my fingers dug into his skin. I was lost in the myriad of sensations overwhelming my senses. I wanted to pull him closer, to feel him inside and against me. Devon moved, pulling back then pressing into me again. His lips trailed along my neck, down to my collarbone. My back arched as I tried to get closer. I needed to feel him beneath my skin. I ran my hands along his skin, scraping my nails up his back as he set his teeth into the flesh high on one breast. The slight sting swiftly turned to pleasure. My teeth ached to sink into him. He shifted above me, and the hard shaft buried inside me hit something different. The change did something, I wasn't sure what, but before I could figure out what was happening, my body clenched. 
My fingers curled, digging into his arms as I pulled him closer. My head bent back into the bed in a wordless scream of release. A wash of pleasure came through the still open connection with my mate, causing another wave of climax through my body. I shuddered and held him tight, 